Okay, so like me, you're probably a SWOT editor. And if you're a SWOT editor, your main goal would be to speed up your editing workflow so you can take less time per project so you can do more projects, make more money, or be more successful, whatever. In this video, we're gonna talk about a few tips and tricks in Premiere Pro specifically on how you can speed up that editing workflow with some minor little changes to it that won't even take you five minutes to learn. Let's, let's talk about it then. Okay, so the first thing we wanna talk about is a ripple edit tool. What is a ripple edit tool? Well, normally if you had like a clip like this one, right? And you wanted to drag and delete some of it, you can just click drag and you can delete the part you want out of it. But then you would have to click A, select everything in front of it, click drag and replace everything back in front of there. And, th and then you have to do like a couple steps. But what if you could just get rid of all of that by pressing B on the keyboard or over here, the ripple edit tool, click on the clip you want, click the edge and drag the part you don't want out of it. And we'll automatically ripple it back in place. So you know what the ripple delete tool is. It's the same thing, but with a tool. So you can go anywhere you want, click and drag, and it will delete that portion out and automatically bring everything backed in place so there's no empty spots, it's great. But what about when you find like a really nice song and then it's way too short for your timeline and, and you have to use like multiple of them, but you'd rather just use one. Well, we'll go ahead, click and drag some audio that you want in there. Usually it's a music track, click the music track, go over to the ripple edit tool, now click and hold it and you'll have more options. Remix tool, click the end of it, drag the end to the end of your footage, to the end of your timeline, whatever. It'll automatically take the music and then just literally remix it as it sounds to, to where it makes you know total and complete sense and you can look over here and you'll see you know your duration your stretch you can customize how many cuts or how many segments there are in it and that's it now you have a fully realized clip from beginning to end with one music track backing it the whole way through it's great it's awesome use it Next on the list, you can use the Q and W key on your keyboard when you're dragging. So like if you're clicking and dragging and you want to ripple edit once again, but you don't want to like keep using the tool because you need your pointer out, well just on the part where you want to cut, if you want to cut this section out from there, use Q, it'll delete everything behind it from the last cut to there. And then in opposite of that, if you want to click and drag here and you want to delete everything from here to here, this section, go ahead and press W. Now it will cut everything to the next segment to the next point. You can see it stopped right here where the audio meets. And that's it. So now you have Q and W. You can cut ahead, cut behind, ripple edit it. It will automatically bring it back. It's great. Let's keep, let's keep going. The next big thing is to learn your keyboard shortcuts. Obviously we've talked about a few, Q, W, B, but what about V, which is your select tool or C, which is your razor tool. Now you might want to customize these and make them your own, but learn your freaking keyboard controls. My guys, it, it is the most important part of video editing is speeding up your workflow, making it efficient so you don't have to spend forever doing it. So use your keyboard shortcuts that they give you, make your own keyboard shortcut, whatever. There are hundreds of them, literally, there are so many options, combinations, whatever. Learn them, be good with them. Don't think about it. That way you can just worry about the edit and not about the keyboard. Another one that I've had people ask is actually, how do you build your own workspace? Well, let's say I don't like my program here and I want my program over here. Well, I can click and drag on that program and I can lock it to this side of the dock here and now I flip my orientation there. What about if I didn't like all this over here? Well, I can click and drag this section. I can click and drag them over here and all of a sudden, bam. My project panel is bigger, this is bigger, whatever. But how about if I mess something up and I don't want it to be that way? We'll go to Window, Workspaces, Reset to Saved Layout, and it will reset this one to whatever layout that was saved previous to it. The next tip is just use a mouse. I, I, I know trackpads are a thing, trackpads, you know, are a thing, but you have to do this the whole time. And like, I don't know, I don't like using a trackpad. I don't like using laptops. But however, if you have a laptop, you can always plug a little mouse in there and it will speed up your workflow a lot. You'll, you'll not have to move your hand. You can have one hand on the keyboard, one hand on, on the mouse. Maybe you already did it with the trackpad, maybe you disagree, but this is my opinion. I think it helps to have a mouse. It's a lot quicker to move around and, and do things. Another great tip is to use audio time units. The way you can do that is going to three lines right here. Show audio time units. Now you'll notice up here in the timeline, I can keep zooming in a lot farther than normal and I can see the waveform of the audio. Normally, you know, I can only cut by the frame, but in audio, I can cut by the audio beat itself. So I can have a lot more specific cuts in the audio when you're editing. It's, it's, it's helpful, I promise, use it. Another one is to not be afraid to make your own presets of things that you do quite often. In my case, and as you guys might know, in my effects over here, I can type in the word bloom, and you can see that I have a bloom preset, but bloom isn't a preset or a effect that's built into Premiere Pro. So what did I do? Well, I'm gonna click and drag this onto this clip, for instance. And now in effect controls, you can see that it's actually a Luma key and a Gaussian blur, 
labeled bloom because these two effects are applied when I apply that bloom preset that I made myself. If I undo it, you'll see they both go away because once again, it's a preset that I made. Use a preset, save a preset. Okay, so let's say you have these two effects on here, a channel blur and a luma key. Well, if you command click both of them and then you right click, save preset, now you can make that preset whatever you want. You can name it, you can name it, you can tell what type it is, you can put a little description and you press okay. And now you have a saved preset with those two effects, whatever parameters you set, that's what it will be. That's your preset, done. You know how there's chapters on this video and there's chapters on YouTube as a whole? Well, in Premiere Pro, you can do the same thing. So let's say you have a marker, which I have one right here, I'll drag it over here. And this marker, I want to identify where my intro is. I want to identify where 0 0.1, 0 0.2, whatever. So I can click and add a marker by pressing M on the keyboard with the timeline selected, it goes up here. And now I can hold Alt or Option and I can click and drag and break that marker apart. So now I know, hey, from this beginning to this end of this marker right here is my intro. And then if I want to do it again, I can press M again, hold Alt or Option, click, and click and drag again. And now I know that this section here is my first point. And I can continue to do that. So now I can just jump from section to section and know pretty much where and when things are taking place in my timeline. It's helpful, I promise. Another helpful tip is to scale the frame size so when you drag footage in, it automatically reframes. To do this, go find your preferences or settings, go over down and go to media. In media, you'll see default media scaling, set from none, which is probably what your default will be, to scale the frame size. This way, when you drag footage into your timeline, it'll automatically reframe. It's helpful, use it. It saves a little bit of time, just a little bit, but it's enough to help you. Okay, so that's it, thanks for watching. I hope this helped you guys, I will see you soon. Sorry for a little bit of a lead upload. Had some personal things going on. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon.